You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Claim your confidence and live your life happy. This is Permission to Thrive with award-winning body confidence coach, Jamie Michelle. Jamie asks, why would you just be surviving in life when you could be thriving? So now, allow yourself to be lifted to a new level of happiness and experience life the way you were meant to be. Now here's the host of Permission to Thrive, Jamie Michelle. Hey there, happy Monday. You are listening to Permission to Thrive right here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Jamie Michelle, and tonight's episode is all about how to heal your anxiety and really deal with it and not only do that, but transform your life. So anxiety is something that pretty much every single person on the face of this earth has at least experienced one point or another in their lives. And and like we talked about last week in, in diet culture, like today's society just makes it so hard for us to see the bigger picture. Like we get so caught up in things and then what ends up happening is our, our minds like to kind of trip us out and we, we create stories in our heads and our mind automatically goes to like the worst case scenario. And then we're freaking out about something that hasn't even happened yet, but we're worried about it because that's where our mind goes, right? And so we are caught up in this like crazy mind warp. And and when we're focused on those things that we're worried about happening, we actually end up bringing those into our reality, kind of like how I was explaining last week. Now, I want to talk a little bit about my own experience with anxiety before I introduce my amazing, amazing guest to share with you tonight. So um, if you don't know, I was diagnosed with PTSD about a year ago. Um, but before I got that diagnosis, I... Um, had like very, very, very severe panic attacks. And I did not know what was going on. Like I, I didn't know that I was dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I had regained, you know, 60 plus pounds in, in a very short amount of time. And, and I had already had body image issues, but, um, when, when those panic attacks and those anxiety st- attacks come started coming in, like I, I literally didn't know what was happening. It felt like I was going to die. Like I, I distinctly remember being in my car, um, and I was going to go meet my brother for a run, um, in, in a local park nearby. And I got to like the parking lot of the park and I, I couldn't get out of my car. Like I, I, I felt like I couldn't breathe, like my lungs and my throat were closing up. And, and, and if you've ever experienced this, which I know a lot of you have, it's, it's scary. It can be so terrifying and it honestly does. It feels like you're going to die. And, and so tonight I've brought on a very, very special guest with me here who actually happens to be an expert in helping women transform and heal their anxiety. And I'm absolutely so psyched to introduce her to you. This woman that I'm about to share with you, she is an incredible force in the personal development industry. And I'm so beyond grateful to be able to call her not only a mentor, but a friend. Um, Stevie Wright, she is a certified self-love coach who specializes in really helping women, like I said, heal their anxiety and teaching them how to heal their bodies through using things like the breath and intuitive movement. She's actually a certified breathwork facilitator as well. And she is at the firm standpoint, as am I, that the body is actually the greatest and the most powerful tool that we can use to heal ourselves. So Stevie went from feeling so disconnected and just never feeling good enough, like we 
talked about last week from feeling all like that to just fully stepping into her own power. And she is just so passionate about sharing this with women and helping other women do the same thing for themselves. So Stevie, thank you so, so much for being here with us tonight. I'm so glad that you're here. Oh my goodness. What an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> thank you so much, Jamie, for having me on. This is so fun. Yeah, no, I'm so glad that you could be here with us. Um, I can't wait for you to share your story with our listeners. Um, I know anxiety is just something that so many of us struggle with. And like I said, myself included. So um, could you tell us a little bit about your journey? Yeah, of course. So I began, I I, I kind of say that I woke up maybe four-ish years ago. And I say woke up because I really felt like before that time, I was essentially asleep and what I mean by sleep is just so numb, so disconnected from my body, so not in tune with my emotions, just really, really playing small in every way possible. And it was, it, it, what happened is I was at a time in my life where I just felt really, really lost. I was, yeah. you know, 20, 22, 23 years old. I had no idea what I wanted to do with, with my life. I was totally numbing out on food and social media and this, that, and the other. And I just, there was a moment, and I've told this on many a podcast and shows before, but there was a moment where I was sitting at home, like, you know, I had just gotten home from my lame retail job. <laughs> and <laughs> I was watching, you know, the Mindy Project or something, and I had my hand, like, wrist deep into an ice cream carton. And wow. I just remember thinking to myself, is this really all I have to offer the world? And I had been riddled with anxiety for so many years. Like I was never present. I was always rushing. So like fear of missing out, fear of being left behind, always helping oh, yeah. my worth. And this anxiety just plagued me. And so when I, when I had this moment, I was like, this, there's no way that this is all I have to offer. And so, I mean, I'm giving you the very short version, but over those four yeah, years, no, I, love it. I, I, I <laughs> dove really deep into my own self-love, my own belief systems. I got super honest about the stories that I was perpetuating and the, the beliefs that I had been carrying for 15, 20 years. And just ask myself, like, what is actually true about the soul, the soul that I am that arrived here mm. on the planet? And through different programs and mentors and therapy and coaching, I was able to kind of see the truth of who I am, which is that my worth is innate. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to achieve it or prove it. It's just there. It's mine because I was born. Absolutely. That's so beautiful. And that's exactly what this show is about. It's about giving ourselves permission to thrive. And so many of us, we don't even understand that we are worthy just because. So it's so beautiful. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. And so um, it's, it's taken a long time. And I know I've got still a long way to go, but um, I got into coaching so that I could help other people do this, this same kind of work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I, I often find with a lot of us coaches that do this work, it's usually our own journey that does lead us to and in, be inspired to like help and serve others because we know so intimately what that pain is like. And like I shared with the listeners last week, like me with my body image and I struggled with food as well. Like I can so relate to you and, and the ice cream carton and mine was actually peanut butter. Like I would go through jars of peanut butter and and um, my audience actually knows that like that was my binge food. And, and I love how you use the um, analogy of being like numb and asleep because that's exactly what it is. So um, could you tell us a little bit about what actually like anxiety is? Yeah. So anxiety is a primal response. Basically like in our evolution, the perfect, the purpose of anxiety was to pre- protect us from danger. Mm-hmm. Be alert, be on guard, you know, like you're about to be killed by a saber tooth tiger. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And so Unfortunately, we still live with this same stress response, even though we don't need it. It's we're living in a world where we're thriving, but our brain still is is still wired for survival, essentially. Absolutely. It doesn't it doesn't realize that we no longer have to fight off predators. And so we anxiety is essentially a response from a thought and a thought creates feelings. So if you have a thought, I 
I'm in danger, that creates the feeling of anxiety. And then that's kind of that, that um, disconnection where the disconnection and the spinning happens. So yes. that's, a, that's what anxiety is on a primal level um, and why we have it still to this day. Absolutely. No. And I I resonate with that so much. We're actually we've got a quick commercial break coming up, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, Stevie is going to reveal a huge secret on how to become really the master of your own anxiety. So this is Permission to Thrive. I'm Jamie Michelle here with Stevie Wright, and we are on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back to Permission to Thrive right here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Jamie Michelle, and I'm here with self-love coach and anxiety expert Stevie Wright. Now, before we went to commercial, we were chatting about what anxiety actually is, and Stevie was really educating on us on how anxiety is really actually a, a primal stress response that we needed for survival back in like caveman days, right? But our brain is still wired that way, so it looks for things to kind of protect us from, but they're not actually real. So um, we're going to get into ways that you can actually gain control over that. And um, before we do that, Stevie, I just want to ask you one more question. Tell us yeah. a little bit about why so many people are feeling this debilitating energy of anxiety. Like what's actually going on in our brains? Well, the main ingredient with anxiety is fear. Um, so fear is, you know, you can be anxious about the dentist, right? But, or anxious about your first date, but the, but the root cause of anxiety is really fear. And so there's different, there's lots of different types of fears. A lot of them, common ones are fear of missing out, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of being left behind. Um, so there's all these common fears that we struggle with and, Mm -hmm. It's all about anticipation. We're anticipating something to happen. It hasn't happened yet, right? It's, but we're anticipating yes. it. So if you, if, one of the things that I really teach my clients is, um, is breath and also presence and you, using the breath to, to be present. Mm-hmm. Because if you, when it comes to, and, and let, let's be clear, like we're not talking about traumatic fear. If there's an actual threat, you know, then that needs to be dealt with. I'm talking right. about anxiety, anxiety where there's not an actual threat, but we still think we're going to die. <laughs> right. And so, and you can actually, f- you know, the difference in your body, right? You, like you can feel the difference between being like anxious and then there actually being a real physical threat to our lives. Like there is a physical difference. Anxiety is more like, like 
I don't know, loud in my my mind and my it's like chatter and like just so much like haziness. Yeah, chaos. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Whereas fear, like real true fear, it's like deeper in your body, right? It's like you're in your core and your gut and you're like, no, like I got to get out of here right now. So that's so interesting. Absolutely. And so when we talk about presence, there's mm. a tool that I love um, teaching my clients because it gives us so much space between the thought and the the actual anxiety. So when I hear people talk, they hear they, I hear them say, like we hear people say all the time, I'm so anxious. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm so yep. sad. I'm so blank. And no, you're not. <laughs> I know this is exactly what I think too. (laughs) (laughs) I talked about this a little bit last week. It's like identifying with what we're feeling, right? Yes. You yourself are not anxiety. I am not anxiety, but yet I experience the sensation of anxiety. So I use this tool called observation versus identification. So if I'm identified with it, I am anxious. This is me. This is who I am. Then you're creating a story. There's like, you're creating all sorts of meaning around it. And Mm -hmm. there's no space between you and the anxiety for you to see actually is this true is this a threat you know how can I how could I deal with this if I were to tap into my higher self how could I deal with this in the moment there's no space for that because you're so wrapped up in the identification of the story absolutely to back up and really be an observation meaning I, I like to think of it as a movie theater so your life is a movie and you're in you're in the theater watching your movie yes or I've heard a, that analogy a few times actually I love that yeah or even like a bird's eye view so yeah you're looking down and this again this does take presence it does take awareness but if you can create that space between your anxious thoughts and you yourself like Jamie yes then you can you can create a level of compassion and love and love and compassion are the two ingredients that make, I mean, any emotion essential, honestly, but anxiety specifically, if you can meet your anxiety with love and compassion rather than judgment or like trying to get rid of it, or I hate that I have it, or I'm wrong that I have it and I need to to get rid of it. If you actually let yourself feel the anxiety, ask yourself what's true what's not true, how can I act from a place of love and compassion, you know, and move forward that way. That's a completely different strategy that oh, most yeah. people don't realize they have, they don't have, they don't realize they have the option. That's right? what I was just going to say. It's like, I talked about this a little bit last week is like, you don't even know that, that that's a choice. And, and we always have a choice. And that's one thing that I really want you guys to understand who you're listening to this. Like you always, always, always have a choice. And Stevie's going to expand a little bit more on that um, here. Yeah. Yeah. When it, when it comes to choice, like we, something so powerful about choice and having the power of choice is that you're taking your power back. And mm-hmm. I love that you're talking about choice, Jamie, because, you know, when we, when we externalize our needs, when we give our needs to, meaning meaning when we give our power away and we say, okay, well, my boyfriend has to meet my needs or my parents have to yes. meet my needs or my landlord has to meet my needs or my boss has to meet my needs. You're, right. giving, all of your, you're giving all of your power away. Yeah. And so take your power back. The most empowering thing, the most self-loving thing you can do is take radical responsibility for your own life. I and love that. I talk, yeah. And I talk about this a lot in on my Instagram and things like that. But I, I love the analogy of princess versus queen energy or prince versus king energy. Where Now, can you tell you know, us a little bit about that? Because I'm not really familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So princess energy is, you know, victim mentality. It's, well, it's, not, it's my, it's no one's fault. But, or, yeah, it's, it's, it's not my fault. Wham, wham, it's like that kind of yes. victim. Yes, okay, um, got you. Giving, giving her power away. It's um, putting her needing other people to make her happy instead of sourcing her own joy in herself. Right. Um, like waiting for the like prince she, charming to come in and save her kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's very scarcity mindset. Whereas queen energy, a queen, what does she do? A queen lets everything serve her. So even like the shit, sorry, is there, are you allowed to cuss? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Even like a <laughs> shitty situation that shows up out on her doorstep, how she says, how do I let this shitty situation serve 
me. Whereas a princess would say, oh, why me? Right? Yes. So a queen energy is so in her power. She does not outsource her power. She cultivates her power internally. And she says, I, I have the power to run my life. And People don't, if I'm being honest, people don't want to take that, take that power because then they have to be responsible for their shit. Right. Right. I, you know, and that's something that I I see with clients a lot is you would actually be getting what you want out of life. If you stop waiting for other people to give it to you and you gave it to yourself. Yeah. Um, We just went on on a major, major tangent, but (laughs) No, I know, but it's so important. I mean, this is actually how things go in coaching sessions, right? So we actually, we have a quick commercial break coming up, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll be chatting more with Stevie and she's going to continue telling us the most important things we can do for ourselves when we're in the sensation of anxiety. So you are listening to Permission to Thrive. I'm Jamie Michelle, and we are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Welcome back to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Jamie Michelle, and you are listening to Permission to Thrive. I am so psyched that you're here spending this hour with us because this conversation that I'm having with Stevie Wright is just Honestly, it's healing and transformational in and of itself. It's like so powerful what we're talking about. So in case you're just now tuning in, Stevie is a self-love coach that specializes in helping women heal and transform their anxiety. And we were actually just talking about the difference between the energies of being a princess or a victim and then shifting into the queen energy or being, you know, how can everything serve me, including the the things that might be going wrong? So um, and and that came off of us talking about being so aware of like what we're thinking about, because that is so important to be able to actually know what thoughts we're thinking that are triggering the anxiety, because anxiety is a stress response to a thought. So um, this is such a huge thing that that my clients struggle with. And, and what I know Stevie really wants to talk about is that's this super important piece. And that's feeling safe in our bodies. So Stevie, if you could tell us like, why is feeling safe in our body? Why is that so important when it comes to anxiety in particular? Yeah. So I think that a lot when it comes to safety, I think if there are old wounds or old trauma from um, childhood or, you know, early, early adolescence, then sometimes it's, it's, we fundamentally don't feel safe in our bodies, meaning like Mm -hmm. our bodies don't feel like a safe place to inhabit. So we do all the things we numb with food, we numb with social media, we numb with alcohol, we numb with sex because we don't, 
our, our pain and our emotions are, we, the story is, it's not true, but the story is, I can't deal this. This will kill me if I actually feel this. And wow. so we have yeah. a fundamental, fundamental, um, fear that it's not safe to be in the body. And the reason safety is so important to cultivate in the body is because our pain, our emotions, feeling is the, our, our power is in our, is in our pain. A pain yes. is a portal to truth. And so if you're allowing yourself, if you know fundamentally you're safe to feel, and then you allow those emotions to come through, whether that's anxiety or depression or fear, or even, even on the opposite spectrum, bliss or joy, sometimes we don't fully let ourselves be elated because Absolutely. We're it's going to go Right. away so we're yeah or like away. you're waiting for the other shoe to drop I know I have a lot of clients who they literally will admit like I don't let myself feel happy because when and this is a story that they tell themselves when I do feel so happy and like everything's going right I just know that that means something is going to go terribly wrong very soon and it, it is it's that fear of feeling all that emotionality of uh, in our bodies and I know that this was something like I did not feel safe in my body for like 20 years right it took me so such a long right. time to be able to like tap into that. And I know that this is something that so many people and, and women in particular, like don't understand. So understanding how, like, tell us how we can really learn how to feel safe in our bodies. Yeah. So I think it starts with, there's a couple ways. I think it starts with changing the belief systems. And so how you change beliefs is, I mean, it's not, it's, it, it takes time, right? It's a process. But how you change beliefs is first you get really clear on what your current belief about safety in your body is. And again, you can do this with any belief. So you get clear on what the current maybe limiting belief is. And then you step into, it's like, Jamie, you step into the highest version of yourself, the soul yeah. who came to the planet, the most pure aligned version of you. And yes. you ask like just pretend for a second, drop the stories, drop the bullshit, drop the limiting beliefs and just experiment. What is actually true about my body? What is actually true about this belief? Right. And then yeah. you get to the truth, you get to the truth of what's actually true. And then the work is embodying that belief every single day and try and just showing up for yourself. And some days you won't, and some days you will, and you'll go back and forth. But just mm -hmm. having that awareness and the wherewithal to show up for yourself and try embodying that belief every single day. And then some yes. practical ways. It, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So the, and then some practical ways of feeling safe in the body is identifying in your body, like internally, what feels safe. And that could be as easy as um, gravity or maybe your heart space feels safe or maybe caressing your skin feels safe or maybe um the the feeling of the floor beneath your feet feels safe like what internally like like where in your body might you feel safe and then where yes. externally might you feel safe is it i ask my clients all the time and one of my clients said which i thought was beautiful she said Sometimes I'll look at an exit, like I'll, I'll know like where the door is just so I know that I can exit if I need to any situation. That's so, so powerful. Exit, yeah. Maybe an exit makes you feel safe. Maybe um, the person next to you feel safe. Maybe uh, a breeze makes you feel safe. Um, so just finding those internal and external baselines that you can come to over and over again. And something yes. I do with my clients is I, is I have them do wall work, which is Basically, I'll have them lean up against a wall with their feet about a foot apart from the, from the wall okay. and just really put all your weight into the wall. And it's like your, your upper back, your shoulders are leaned up against the wall. I'm doing it now as I'm telling you this. <laughs> I love it. And, I love it. <laughs> and you're really just letting yourself be so supported by the wall, meaning as you're doing this, you're really making this a mindful practice. Like ah. the wall is not going to crumble out from under you. The wall is not going to leave you. The wall has got you. It's got your back. And you're just feeling now as you're doing this, where in your body do you feel that sensation of safety as the wall has, is supporting you? Um, another way is grounding in earth um, and yes. specifically like sand or dirt in, in, in your bare feet. And instead of using this as a meditative practice, like, you know, kind of closing your eyes and going elsewhere, really opening your eyes, being on the planet, being in on the earth, 
feeling what it feels like to have the ground beneath your feet, connecting to your feet, connecting to your calves, just, and then saying again, it's safe for me to be on the planet. It's safe for me to speak my truth. It's safe to me for for me to be in my body and just knowing like the planet is not going to crumble out from underneath you. Yeah. That's one of the ones that I use a lot with my clients too. And myself when I'm doing meditations, like getting grounded and feeling like I'm so supported right now, like I'm not going anywhere. And, and that really does, it gives us so much access to just like open ourselves up. It might, it might take time and that's totally okay. But I promise you and I promise to everyone listening that if you really try this and you embody this and you practice Mm -hmm. this feeling of safety, um, you will start to realize, oh, my gosh, my body is a safe place to be. I can come back home. Yeah, I mentioned last week that it's actually the safest place to be um, to everyone listening. So you can go back and listen to that episode, too. But when we come back, we're actually going to go even deeper into an even more incredible technique that Stevie's going to share with you to heal your anxiety coming up next. So don't go anywhere. You do not want to miss this technique. You are listening to Permission to Thrive right here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Jamie Michelle, here with self-love coach Stevie Wright. We will be right back. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Welcome back to Permission to Thrive. I'm your host, Jamie Michelle, and I am here live with self-love coach and anxiety expert, Stevie Wright. We are on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I hope that your Monday has been going well so far. (laughs) If you're just now tuning in, I promise you it's going to be even more amazing. Um, What you're about to hear, Stevie is just so amazing at helping women just cultivate safety in their body so that they can really transform their anxiety. And and like she said earlier, like turn that pain into your power. And, and um, before we came into commercial break, I mentioned that she was going to share with us a very, very, very special technique, which is um, something that I haven't yet t- covered, but Stevie is very, very, very in tune with this. And it's, it's actually working with the inner child that, that lives within us. So if you could tell us Stevie, like what actually does that mean? And especially what does it mean for us in terms of healing our anxiety? Yeah. So this is one, (laughs) this is one (laughs) of my favorite, favorite topics. Uh, I love talking about inner child. I love working with the inner child. I love coaching on the inner child. And so if anyone is out there and has no idea what I'm talking about, the inner child is essentially the version of you. It's 
the three-year-old version, the five-year-old, the seven-year-old, the 17-year-old version of you. Mm -hmm. And it's the version of us that has taken on all the wounding, all the stories, all the pain, right, from from childhood. Um, yeah. And we've brought it into adulthood. And what's crazy about inner child is that if you have spent most of your life being disconnected from her, she's very, she or he is very much in control. So even yeah. as adults, if you're, if you're not in tune with her, if you're not connected with her, then it is going to be trigger city because your inner child is essentially <laughs> like your three-year-old self is essentially like having a tantrum and like, pay attention to me. Like, yeah, exactly. It's, I know. And I know this so well myself. Um, I remember when I first started this work myself and, and people would mention inner child to me, I would literally like roll my eyes and be like, I don't believe in any of this stuff. But then when I actually started doing the work, I didn't have any memory really of my childhood except for like a few highlights. And then once you start like feeling back into your body and you can actually like, I vividly remember my childhood now. And it's like, we are actually, I mentioned this last week, we're programmed on how to live our lives from the ages of zero to like around seven. And like Stevie said, it's, it's literally running your show if you're not aware and if you're not connected. So it's just right. incredible. Right. And so, yeah, like you said, so if you're not, if we're not connected to her, then it's, it's, it's not going to be good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> something that uh, my coach told me that was so profound for me is like, if you've been doing the work, if you're on a personal development journey, you're on your healing journey, your personal developed self, like your evolved woman self is still so young. Like me, Stevie, as a 27 year old, I've been doing the work for four years. So my evolved woman is who's doing the work, who has her shit together sometimes <laughs> is a four year old. <laughs> <laughs> I totally it resonate with that. Right? I totally get it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, so my evolved woman is a four year old, but my inner child, she's 27. Yeah. She's and been with so you since she day one. is going to be way more in power than if I'm not paying attention to her. So I, I run people, we probably don't have time today, but I run people through an inner child meditation and it's actually free. Um, in, I have a freebies library that people can absolutely get it, but I run them through this visualization of themselves as a three-year-old. And That's amazing. what I ask people, what did you really need that maybe you didn't get from your caregivers? What did you need to be, have said to you? What looks like, what did, what did you need? Like, did you need someone to just tell, tell you that it's going to be okay? Did yeah. you need someone to tell you that, that you're perfect, that you don't have to change anything? Did you need right. someone to tell you that, you don't have to, you don't have to rush. You can go slow. Did you just, did you just need more love? Did you need more touch? Like find out what the thing is wow. and then meet that need internally, meaning reparent yourself in a way that maybe you didn't get as a child. So bringing this back to anxiety, when we're feeling those anxious moments, when we're in that fear, inner child work is such a powerful tool because you can say, you, you take the, it takes the presence, it takes the awareness, right? But you mm -hmm, can absolutely, you can essentially like stop, drop and roll for a second and just say, <laughs> check in with the little, the little baby inside of you and just say, what do you need, sweetie? I'm here for you. What can, what, how can I love you more? What do you need mm -hmm. right now? And just then giving her the things she needs. So if she needs comfort, then maybe you wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself a hug and, and mm -hmm. rock yourself back and forth and say, I love you. You're safe. I'm never going to leave you. Um, yeah. If you need, if you need play, if you just need more play, then maybe you paint, maybe you dance, maybe you um, hang out with a girlfriend. If you yeah. need, um, I, you know, there's all sorts of ways that we can meet our needs internally. But when it comes back to anxiety then it's like such a, an amazing, amazing shift. Um, and it's a totally different paradigm you're living in because then you're able to re-parent yourself. And again, coming back to the power, there's so, so much power in that. Absolutely. It's like you're you're able to completely shift your beliefs just by doing that inner child work. And that's one of the things that we talked about last week is like shifting your beliefs. It can be really challenging from going to like, I am unworthy to I am so worthy. And we have to use that I am in the process of statement. But when you can get so clear and, and envision yourself at that age, like what what do you need right now? And one thing that I do with my clients with this work is I love doing mirror work and getting them to look themselves in the eye and talking to their inner child that way. 
Um, it's just yes. so yeah. powerful and, and anxiety and body image. Like I, I feel like they're very related. I know everything is so connected and you're going to realize that, that everything that you feel is like connected and how you show up in one area is going to be how you're going to show up in every other area. So it's just so, so such powerful work. Um, we are headed into a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to share uh, a couple of powerful questions that you can actually start asking yourself when you're feeling anxiety, when you're feeling anxious. So this is really where we start to actually heal and transform. So do not change the channel or walk away. I'm Jamie Michelle here with Stevie Wright, and this is Permission to Thrive. We're live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we will be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Permission to Thrive, and I'm Jamie Michelle, and I'm just so happy to have you here with us. We are here tonight talking about how you can really heal and actually transform your anxiety so that you can reclaim your power and take back your power over your life. And this is what really allows you to thrive. So I'm here with Stevie Wright, and she is going to share with us the importance of asking ourselves the right questions that are going to allow us to transform and change the relationship that we have with our anxiety. So Stevie, what questions should we ask and and why is asking these questions so important? Yeah, I think uh, curiosity is one of the most gentle things that you can do for your anxiety. And when I what I mean by curiosity is instead of, I, you know, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but instead of meeting your emotions and, you know, specifically with anxiety, meeting them with judgment and with shame and trying to get rid of it, the best thing that we can do is include and transcend. So don't get rid of the anxiety. Don't try to just numb it and push it down and think and make it wrong and think that it shouldn't be here because that's not really helpful either. Include it. Include it into your experience. Say, oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome back. I know I've kind of outcast you. Welcome back in. <laughs> what are you here to teach me? Right. You know, <laughs> It's yeah, silly, but it's just welcoming, you know, meeting it with loving arms um, and open arms. So some of the questions um, that will help you get curious is, what are you here to teach me, right? What yes. are you here to teach me? Um, what do you need right now? What's the lesson in this? Um, what am I really scared of is another yeah. great one. That's um, a great one. Yeah, what am I? It's because it's never really the thing, right? It's never. Um, it's it's always something a little bit deeper. So what am I really afraid of and how can I meet that fear with love and compassion and curiosity? Right. Um, what am I anticipating? 
And another one is what stories am I creating about this situation? Meaning, yeah, um, what am I making this okay, mean? So like, say that again. I said, yeah, what, like, what am I making this feeling mean about myself? Right. So, you know, for example, this, um, you know, a guy doesn't text you back for five hours. So <laughs> that actually happened to me yesterday. I know, I, <laughs> I'm just I know everyone. I know everyone's been there. Um, so <laughs> that doesn't text you back. Doesn't text you back for five hours. And so the story you could be telling yourself is, I he's I said the wrong thing. He doesn't like me. Um, right. I must have scared him off. Um, you know, I'm never I'm never going to be worthy of love. Like I'm never going to find a boyfriend who like blah blah blah. So we spiral into these stories that are not even true, right? right? And the reason, what's crazy about emotion is that it wants to move, energy in motion, right? Yes. The only thing, the only thing that keeps our emotions and sensations stuck in the body is stories. It's attaching meaning. When you, the thing is, we don't want to feel anxiety, but you're locking it in. You're locking that emotion in your body with the story. So the best thing that you can do is get curious, is to feel it, is to lean in, is to say, hello, hi, how are you? Come inside. Yeah, let's have some tea. What do you need? (laughs) Have some Um, tea. I love that. (laughs) And right. And so that's like the, that's the best thing that you can do is having that curiosity and asking those questions because again, it doesn't help to try to push it down because here's the thing, it doesn't work to push it down. Like, no, it doesn't like, oh yeah, I'm numbing. I'm numbing with food and alcohol and yeah, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with this. Like it's actually not easier because no, it, it makes this, it stronger. Maybe you're pushing, right. Maybe you're pushing the fear down, but it's just coming out sideways. Meaning it's just coming out as depression. It's just coming right. out as aggression, aggression. It's just coming out as, you know, anxiety. It's just coming out as loneliness. It's, right. It's still, you're, you're still dealing with it. You're still dealing with the fear, but just in a wonky sideways way. Yeah. And it's almost like worse. And, and like our coach always tells us that we both have the the same, one of the same coaches, Samantha Skelly. It's like what you resist persists, meaning the more you try to hide from it. Like another one of my coaches uses the analogy of like trying to run away from a spider that you're holding in your hand, which is something that I've like done actually in real life. But like you can't outrun what's actually (laughs) inside of you. Like you can't. And, and we try to do that all the time. We try not to feel it. And like you said, we numb with drugs, alcohol, sex, food, social media, uh, Netflix, like binge watching shows or, or whatever it might be. And even honestly, like meditation can be a way of numbing, like good, good, healthy habits can be a way of numbing. And, and there's like a way, like, am I, am I meditating right now? Cause I, I'm, I'm trying to like access my higher self or am I meditating right now? Cause there's something I don't want to feel and I'm not, I'm just going to pretend that it's not there. Right. And so yeah. that is just amazing. So Stevie, can you tell us, um, where can people find out more about you? Because I know that so many listeners are going to want to be working with you like immediately after this episode is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can find my website, Stevie, Wright. That's S T E V I E W R I G H T dot C O. And uh, so you can find out a little bit more about me on there. And I also hang out a lot on Instagram. That's Stevie L. Wright underscore. Um, so, yeah, I hang out with both of those places quite a bit. Um, and if anyone's interested, I offer um, a anxiety masterclass. And it's all about this stuff, all about how to deal, heal, and transform your anxiety. It's very affordable. You have lifetime access to it. Um, and it comes with a free meditation library, all sorts of practices and tools going way more in depth into what anxiety is, why we have it, how to process it in the moment, how to deal with it in the moment and how to be proactive about it. Um, and it's, it's the best thing I've ever created. It's something I'm really proud of. Yeah. And I've listened to, I've, I've actually done some of your meditations, Stevie, and they are so powerful. Like you, Mm -hmm. I just like the way that you allow people to visualize, like even if you are someone who is completely brand new to meditation, you've never meditated before in your life. You don't think you can quiet your mind. I guarantee you, you can do Stevie's meditations and it will be a ride. Like you've (laughs) never experienced in your life. Like you will have so much transformation from these meditations. Um, I haven't had a chance yet to go into the anxiety masterclass, but I just know that it's, it's truly transformational. I mean, I've seen the reviews and, and everything you do, um, on Instagram, obviously is just like hitting it out of the park. So, um, 
if you're new to Thank this you. kind of work, yeah, no, I, I, and I mean it as, as someone else in this space, you know, it's so important to know, like, we're all starting at different levels. You don't have to be an expert in this work to do this work. We all started from a place where we had no clue what we were doing. And so doing things like this for yourself, like taking the masterclass or, or doing one of the meditations, that's your gateway. That's like, you just have to take one step at a time. So I know that this can feel overwhelming sometimes, but just take that first step. Just take that first step. Yes. We've got a quick commercial yeah. break coming up, but stay put because I know you're going to want to know more about what Stevie does and how she can help you. Um, so stick around. I am Jamie Michelle. You're listening to Permission to Thrive live on TuneIn Radio and BBM Global Network. We will be right back. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. All right. Welcome back to Permission to Thrive. I'm your host, Jamie Michelle, and we're live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio here with self-love coach and anxiety expert, Stevie Wright. And I'm just so beyond honored and grateful uh, to be here with Stevie tonight. Like, I'm I'm so excited for all of you listening who are going to be able to completely just change your life from all of the incredible information that Stevie has shared with us so far about our our anxiety. And, And what we've talked about is literally just like skimming the surface. There is so much more and and so much more to learn. And so if what you're listening to now on this show, you're like, I don't even know what inner child is or, or like, how do I even know like what my higher self is like, those might be words that you've never heard before. That's okay. Like ask questions. We're here to help you. Like, that's why we are doing this show. That's why Stevie's here. And, and we really just want to understand like, our emotions. And and we had left off kind of talking about like allowing ourselves to feel the fear and feel the emotions. And, and I know that there's a lot of resistance to that, especially when you're not even uh, like letting yourself feel into your body at all. You don't think it's safe. But uh, Stevie, I'm going to let you talk a little bit more on this, like when you feel safety and when you actually allow yourself to feel, how is that helpful in, in allowing us to transform? Like how can we go from feeling awful and anxious to feeling like we're thriving? Well, it's just, it's baby steps, right? So it's just opening up this, um, it's like, it's like a lotus flower. Do you know how it, this is so beautiful. Do you know how a lotus flower grows? No. Oh yeah. Wait, no. In the water? It does. So a lotus flower, before it blooms, its roots go super, super deep into mud, into darkness. Oh, so. Wow. And then it pushes its way up. It fights its way up, up through the water until it comes to uh, up onto the surface of the water where it can be seen in moonlight. So when you think about this work, it's not, and what I don't want to, what I don't want to say is that this work is all doom and gloom because it's not. There's so much joy. There's so much, there's so much peace in this work. There's so much fun and, and life force in this work. All I, all I mean to say with that is, Sometimes it, you have to go into the shadow and build roots in the shadow so that your light can be seen. Um, oh, that's meaning so beautiful. Going into going into the old the, the old stories that we talked about, going into the limiting beliefs, and do this with support. You know, personal development it is a solo journey in a way, but you don't have to do it on your own. No, meaning it is stuff. It, it it is it is work that you kind of do internally. But reach out to a therapist, reach out to a coach, reach out to a counselor or a friend or someone you just really trust and Mm -hmm. get some support in that area, you know, reaching out to people who you know can give you a different perspective um, and just investing in yourself 
that time and that energy so that um, you can clear some of these beliefs that are not serving you. Because here's the thing. We take on the beliefs that are not ours. Maybe they're yep. our moms. Maybe they're our dads. Maybe they're our great, great grandparents. And it's been passed down through our lineage. Yeah. But it just, it just, it just comes back to remembering who you are and coming back to truth about who you came to the planet as and what you have to offer. And one thing, like if I could just impart one thing with the audience today, it would be, you are not broken. You are fully, fully whole. And there's nothing you have to search for or do or prove to make yourself better or worthy. Um, and that oh, is really the, the, the backbone of my work as a coach is um, yes. helping people to, to remember that. Yeah, that, that is so beautiful. And that really is the, the, baseline to all of this work, all of personal development is we as humans, we we were born with what's called a worthiness wound. So when you feel unworthy, you're not alone in feeling that, but it's not true. It's not real. And like Stevie said, if if you're if you're wanting to start out and 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 start healing and transforming, I I was saying this to a friend last night, like getting it out just telling it to a friend, someone that you trust, not even a therapist or a coach, but just like talking about what you're going through, talking about your thoughts, talking about your feelings and, and trusting that you won't be judged. That alone takes away so much of the energetic charge that you feel so much lighter. So, um, Stevie, thank you so much for being here and spending this hour with us. Um, I just wanted to let all of the listeners know Stevie is an an amazing singer. She's actually a professional singer, too. So if you want to hear her sing, be sure to follow her on Instagram at Stevie L. Wright underscore. Um, Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I'm your host, Jamie Michelle. This is Permission to Thrive, and we are on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. In next week's episode, I will be chatting with the host of Grace for Breakfast podcast, Eviana Bynum, and we will be talking about the important role that faith and spirituality actually plays in healing our bodies and and giving ourselves that permission to thrive. So don't miss it. I will see you next week right here. Thank you so much. Bye for now. This has been Permission to Thrive with your host, Jamie Michelle. Jamie brings a fresh, fun, and exciting new perspective on what it means to really have it all. Each week on Permission to Thrive with Jamie Michelle. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.